How is it going, everybody? First off, I hope you're having a great day today. My name is John, and today is not a Just Bucket Sports video. Actually, today is going to be a topical video about why the Brooklyn Nets and the Boston Celtics, their trade a couple years ago, has changed the NBA forever. Let's get into it. So first off, I'm going to detail the trade. I'm going to put it up on the screen so you can also follow it that way. But here's the trade. The trade was the Celtics received a first-round pick from the Brooklyn Nets in the 2014-2016, the rights to swap picks in 2017, and the NBA draft in 2018. They also got Gerald Wallace, Chris Humphreys, Marshawn Brooks, Chris Joseph, and Keith Bogans. All right, cool. And the Celtics got, in exchange for all, all of this, they got Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, Jason Terry, and DJ White. DJ who? DJ White. That's right. No one, no one knows who you are. I'm sorry. So why, why did this even happen? Why did this trade even happen? Here's why. From the Brooklyn's perspective, they were trying to round out a core of Darren Williams, Joe Johnson before he got bad, and also Brooke Lopez before, uh, before he also got... I mean, actually, this was before all three of them got bad, to, to, if you think about it. But believe it or not, they were pretty good. They were pretty good back in the day, but they needed more, more, more help. They needed more help a little bit on the Brooklyn Nets, and they were really, really going to go for it. They were going to swing for the fences to beat the Heat in 2014, and... It didn't work. I mean, obviously it didn't work. But they did it because they thought, all right, well, we're going to bring all the veterans we can, beat the Heat in the playoffs, get as many playoff-ready players as possible, Paul Pierce, Kevin Garnett, and then three players who were, at that time, arguably superstars in the league, put all them together. And Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett were still doing all right. They were not superstars, but they were doing, they were doing pretty good for themselves. So it made sense to have a kind of a, attempt a big five. Now we have the Warriors. Now... This is why everyone hates you, Brooklyn. You may, you pretty much inspire the Warriors. That's, I don't like Brooklyn anymore. I don't like, I don't like them anymore. Anyway, but the Celtics, I, I don't even know how lucky you have to get to luck into four first round picks. And I guess a decent group of veteran players, but you lucked into four first round picks, which would have been absolutely horrible. If, if Brooklyn didn't crash and burn the way they did? And that's a good question. What if, what if Brooklyn does good and those picks never turn into anything? Well, how are we talking about the trade then? Actually, take a pause from the video, put that in the comment section down below. What do you think would have happened if the Nets had, I guess, won this trade and did, well, just not crash and burn like they did? What do you think would have happened? I want to know, comment section down below, go for it, do it right now. The Boston also need to rebuild after trading away Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce. So the four, the four <coughs> first, Bah, 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 bah. The four first round picks they got back were supposed to be uh, helping them rebuild. Obviously, that went at an incredibly accelerated rate after this trade, which is amazing for them. And now we have a team that's supposed to rival the Warriors. I think they can, at least. But I'm getting really off. I'm getting really, getting really off topic this video. This is going to be a long one, guys. But anyway, here's how I think the trade has changed the NBA forever. And it's been the past two, three years that you can really see this. And I'm going to say it outright, no one is trading first round picks anymore. Let me explain. So I'm going to take the past two years of the NBA as my examples for this because that's when I'm really noticing it. And I'm going to outline a bunch of superstar trades nowadays. And, and I'm going to let y'all see just how little people are willing to give up first round picks. And I'll put all the trades up on the screen right now. So first off, we have a Jimmy Butler trade last year during the 2017 NBA draft where Butler and the 16th pick were traded to Minnesota for Zach Levine, Chris Dunn, and the 7th pick. Next up, we have last year's Chris Paul to the Houston Rockets trade, where the Rockets gave up Patrick Beverly, Lou Williams, Sam Decker, Montrez Harrell, Darren Hillard, DeAndre Liggins, Kyle Wilcher, and one, just one, first round pick. Top three, it was top three protected. And then now looking at this year's trades, we have the DeMar DeRozan trade to the Spurs that just happened, where the Spurs only get one first round pick for Kawhi Leonard. Even though DeMar DeRozan is coming back, they only got one first round pick. Then you can also look at the Carmelo Anthony trade to the Atlanta Hawks, which is actually probably the most risky of all the examples I'm going to show you today, considering that that first round pick is so far in the future. And then also going back again to last year in free agency, you have the Paul George to Oklahoma trade that didn't include any first round picks or second round picks at all. And then you also have the Carmelo Anthony trade to Oklahoma City that only had one second round pick. 
So the biggest question I'm trying to pose here is that how in four years time have we gone from trading four first round picks for two aging superstars to not even trading, you're lucky to get one first round pick for a superstar nowadays versus what people were getting back then. And I think it's because of how massively the Brooklyn Nets screwed up in this trade that nobody wants to give up their first round picks and nobody wants to be the next Billy King GM. Nobody wants to go through that again. And right now, because of this trade, we are seeing first round picks at an all time high. Of course, there can also be some other reasons behind this, such as that there are better players in the draft now. I think that's, I think that's pretty easy argument to accept that, that players are due to AAU and due to more sponsorships at a young age. Players are better now coming out of college than they were 10, 20 years ago. And that's another reason why probably first round picks are a little bit more coveted nowadays. And I think you can even make that case for just the Warriors in general are changing how teams build themselves. And that I think there's two cases to make here. One, the Warriors built themselves through the draft, except for obviously DeMarcus Cousins and also Andre Godala and Kevin Durant. But their main core of Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green, all of those guys... Harrison Barnes, you can even throw him in there a couple from a couple years ago. All of those guys were from the draft. So I think at this point, teams see that and they're going to copy that. NBA is a copycat league. And so if you see teams are succeeding with that, probably going to steal it. Try and build yourself for the draft. Look at Philadelphia. Philadelphia is a great example. Boston is too. They traded for those picks, but they've really stayed true to all of those picks um, at the same time. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, all of those guys. The only one that they've traded away was the number eight pick this year, which ended up being Colin Sexton. But, I mean, I also throw Marcus Smart in there. I forgot he was the first of all of those picks. But they're also trying to build the draft, and now they're retaining all those guys, too, with Marcus Smart getting his new contract with them this past offseason. Piggybacking off of that Warriors point, also, with how good the Warriors are, a lot of teams are just kind of throwing in the towel. People are just purposefully tanking, like constantly tanking. We've had to change the rule now. We have had to change a rule because so many teams are just losing on purpose because they don't see a point in trying to compete with the Warriors. And if that is what the attitude of all the NBA teams are going to be, why would I trade my first round pick for a superstar that I'm not trying to get because I don't even want to compete. I want to compete in five years when the Warriors are bad. I don't want to compete now and get a superstar now and get rid of my future. Maybe that has something to do with it as well. But anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today. This is a little random video. I, I I didn't really have like a plan for this one. I wanted to just know what you guys thought. It's something that I've been noticing a lot, and I kind of had my own reasons for it, as I detailed in the video. But I want to know, did I miss anything? Do you guys have any answers for the question of why first-round picks seem to be getting traded a lot less or have become a lot more valuable in today's NBA? Let me know in the comment section down below. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, make sure to share the video, and I will see you all next time.